Hi, my name is Tim McPherson from Saltwater Boat Angling, and this is another one of our videos along with Navionics, and this time it's about Navionics and their boating app. And with me is Lance Godefroy, who is uh, representing Navionics in the UK, and he's going to take us through how you use various aspects of the app, from the beginning uh, and the basics, right through layering, sonar chart shading, uh, and a lot of other features that, uh, that we use. I have to say it's one of my favourite apps to use when I'm out, I use it all the time, I've got it on all my devices uh, and it really has uh, enhanced my fishing experiences. Uh, so um, welcome Lance. Okay Tim, so let's have a look at the uh, various chart layers you can use. So this is the nautical chart that I'm showing you now, this is our standard cartography with all the normal navigation aids that you would expect to see, the contours, the, uh, the description of the areas and so on. Now, I've just brought in here the uh, options to uh, put on different layers. So firstly, I'll switch between nautical chart. I'm going to zoom in on this area called uh, Boulder Bank, which I think is one of the areas that we mentioned just now, uh, and switch on the sonar chart. Now, as soon as I switch on sonar chart, you can see the high res contours appearing. I'll just flick there between nautical and sonar to give you the definition. Mm. So these are half meter contour lines that will easily help you discriminate and see where the drop-offs are going to be at, at a glance. And, uh, that's a very useful feature. Now, in addition to that, we can introduce sonar chart shading. Now, this is a very quick way uh, at a glance of seeing the differences between the, getting an idea of the structure, seeing where the gullies are. So these darker areas of blue are deeper. So you compare that with the lighter areas and it helps you understand, okay, so that may be uh, a favorite spot for fish there. They're just maybe swimming along that gully or feeding off the ledge there. Uh, over here on the, on the right, we've got a, a, a potentially favored area as well. So this is sonar chart shading, which uh, we've, has proven to be very successful. We've had a lot of uh, good reports for it. And uh, we introduced it into the mobile app uh, just a few months ago. Uh, that is, uh, it, it's a really good illustration actually of, of how you, you can utilize the different contour lines and the different yeah. that you've got on there, particularly sonar chart shading, which I find gives that sort of 3D almost effect, doesn't it? And when you combine that with, with what you've got on your plotter, uh, sorry, on your, on your uh, down vision sonar, whatever it is you're using, you can really get a very good idea about what's happening. Uh, yeah, that's right. I mean, we, yeah, we, we introduced the, uh, uh, the sonar chart shading onto the, our chart cards for chart plotters, about a year ago, but during the course of the uh, the last uh, eight about eight months or so ago, we introduced it into the into the mobile app. And as you could see, when I pulled up the various layers on the left hand side using the the uh, icon there, there it's very easy to select them. Mm. So uh, I would urge anglers to start playing with some of those tools because they're very useful. Mm. Okay, that's great. So let's move on to the next one, which uh, I think we're going to talk about fishing ranges. So can you, uh, can you explain what that's all about and how we use that, that part of the app? Yes, yeah, sure, Tim. Uh, that leads in nicely to uh, what I, the next little piece that I'm going to show you. This is how to select various depths of water to go after, go searching whatever fish may say like to feed at 0 to 4 metres, for example, and then others deeper. So here we are, I've selected fishing ranges on the app now. And as you can see, I've got four separate areas that I've selected just for ease of demonstration, really. Um, first one is 0 to 4 metres. So as soon as I highlight that, here it comes. This is all the, everything between uh, down to 4 metres uh, in this particular part of the chart that uh, we're looking at. Uh, there's the next piece, 4 to 8, um, comes up in a different colour. Obviously, you can select those areas. Um, you can even rename the ranges. Um, then we've got our eight to uh, eight to twelve, and then we've got anything beyond that. So, as I say, you can uh, rename that. You can have change the colours to whatever you like. 
Um, but it's another way after you've used the sonar chart and um, sonar chart shading layers to then look specifically at areas that or use all of these tools to help you uh, come and find exactly, uh, go searching for the, uh, the best spots to go fishing. Now, just whilst I'm on this area, I'll show you, you see just below here, we've got a, a tab that says uh, sonar chart density. So this is how you can lower the number of contours you're seeing. As I mentioned, our contours are every half meter at very high level. But if you don't want to have them so uh, tight as that, you can reduce that down to a uh, low or medium. <clears throat> My recommendation would actually would be to keep them at very high because this way you get the very best uh, that we can provide you, half meter contour lines. Uh, it's actually a feature that I've not really used myself because to be quite honest with you, Lance, <laughs> I didn't know it was there. So uh, from that point of view, it's really useful. But it actually, yeah. you, presumably, you, you can set these ranges anywhere you want, can't you? So, you, you know, yeah. if you know that, as you said, if you know there's a bass on a reef at a certain depth at certain points of the tide, then you can actually put that range in as a colour and know that you're drifting over where you, you're pretty confident there are fish. And I think that's a really excellent feature, and I'm very glad that you've <laughs> to stuff, so so uh, we're going to move on now to dropping uh, dropping a mark, I think, and how you actually do that using the app. So um, over to you. Okay, so having had a good look at the map, tried the various layers, see the fishing ranges and so on, I'm now going to home in on finding some uh, marking, some good fishing spots so that I can recall them when I'm out on the water. So here we are. I just simply tap the map. And up comes the option to add a mark, that middle symbol there. And I'm interested in the three fish symbols. Of course, you can see there are several others there as well. But uh, I'll just go for, and you can rename it as well. You can say bass, for example. So there's the mark. I've just dropped it. Um, come across to another one here, which is uh, I'm going to hit the symbol again. I'll give this another color. Keep it as marker 21. But that looks an interesting area. And we'll, I'll just drop in one more for now. This is uh, looking fairly interesting here. Some quite close contours and maybe a drop off right there. Hit the screen, select the marker option and select that blue symbol this time. So now I've got three markers all ready to go. Uh, now, there you go. There's the three markers ready done. And uh, this is you simply can easily change the, uh, the name of it as, as I described a moment ago. So it's pretty sure. straightforward, isn't it? I mean, uh, you know, dropping markers is, 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 is very easy. The key thing is, I, I think, always is to remember to put a name on it because the number of markers I've got on my uh, Avionics app, and many of them, you go back a year later and you wonder what you'd marked it for because you didn't actually tell, you didn't actually put a, a tag with it. So it's always worth taking that little bit of time to, uh, to, to, to put a name on it, I think. Sure, that's right. Well, let's face it, we're doing this at home. We're in maybe during these winter months where we're, that we're going into. We've got dark evenings. You've got the time to do it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is all part of the planning strategies, really, before you go out fishing. Indeed. So uh, next we're going to talk about how you share these marks with other, other anglers. I know quite a lot of anglers are very jealous. They guard their marks very jealously, don't they? Don't like telling yeah. people. But, I mean, I'm yeah. not like that particularly. I'm quite happy to share marks with, with other people. Um, yeah, sure. This is a nice feature that we introduced uh, over this last year again. That's something uh, that you can share these marks. You may have a couple of pals that are going out with you. They may have the app as well. Um, they may also be looking at the same time. So you can simply uh, select the icon here uh, and uh, uh, either export it as a GPX file or share the link. When you press share link, it just gives you the normal email message or Facebook or whatever way you want to share it with your friend. He can then review it in the same way and decide, uh, maybe send you some marks back that he's found. So you build up a little library of marks that you can share between yourselves. So uh, there's also uh, other, another feature, again, I have to say I haven't used this a lot, sometimes I do, it's just it's tides and currents. Uh, this is a very useful addition to the to the app, isn't it? And um, uh, sh show me how that works. Yes, it is indeed. So we've, we've now done our planning of the fishing marks, but we now we may have done that a, a, a few weeks ago, but now the day before we plan to go out, let's look and see what the tide situation is going to be. 
So here by simply selecting the uh, tide option in the uh, search bar there, you've got all the tide stations where we have data in that specific area. We've got one right over the uh, Boulder Bank, uh, just off Celsi Bell there. And you can see just by moving the cursor along, you've got all the tidal height data for the day. So that's the height. If we go back to the search box again and select the current, we've now got the current stations in the area, which is very important, of course, uh, uh, particularly when you're fishing and get, get an idea of the speed of the current. So if you've got to drift, you don't you want to do that at the right state of the tide, so you're not going to drift too quickly over you those spots that you selected. So yeah, the current information is there. Uh, you can see there's uh, the arrow that I've got right over the spot there. Now you can also select weather. That's just by hitting the cursor and choosing the weather option on the left side there. Um, all the weather for the day is showing you the is shown to you there the forecast uh, and you can select the wind option now this is a really neat feature you can see the wind up for the being shown for the next 24 hour period so we can see it's coming from easterly at the moment and it may switch around um, depending on you know we are it's just slightly changing there but the more tails there are on the it's gone completely around right there. More tails are on the arrow, the stronger the wind is. So that's a very useful feature as well in all part of the planning. Uh, this is the final thing you can do is actually set, use the dividers to get the distance between the marks. So from your home port, for example, you want to get an idea of this is at uh, seven miles from where I am now. Um, and uh, you can, you also gives you the bearing to that, uh, to the mark. And you can get the reciprocal as well on that. Just uh, turn the pointer the other way and you get the return journey home as well. Well, it's the current ones that's particularly useful because, of course, you, yeah. you know, quite often you don't, when you're out the boat, you, on a flat sea, people lose their bearings slightly unless they're looking yeah. at the plotter all the time. That's a really useful tool, I think. Um, yes. Yes. Remember as well, Tim, of course, if you've got the mobile in your pocket at the time, <laughs> Yeah. And you've got your mark shown, you will very obviously it will, this will give you your live position. So you will see at a glance uh, how far you've drifted from your mark. Yeah. There's no internet connection necessary apart from having downloaded the chart in the first place. But just one thing to add there of relevance if you have the app on your mobile, uh, the same subscription enables you to have the app on your tablet. So you can just oh. share it. So next we're going to talk about syncing the plotter with the app. So we're going to look at how, how you make it work with your unit on the boat. Y yes, that's right. So um, okay. there's a, a, a function which I'll show you here now. Yes, we've got a function whereby you can synchronize the targets, those fishing marks that you had across to your chart plotter. Many of today's chart plotters have a Wi-Fi function. So here we are, again, selected the menu. And here you can see that I'm connected to a couple of plotters. I'll select the Rain Marine one there, for example. And here we are, the plotter sync function to enable you to transfer routes and markers at a glance. And this will then send the route, the track, those marks that you made straight across to your uh, card in your plotter. And you can see the marks uh, come up immediately. You, anybody else that's on the boat at the time that may have other marks, they can send them across to you as well. Yeah, that's a really useful function, isn't it? And also, what's interesting is other people can sync with your uh, unit yeah. uh, while you're out at sea. That 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 could be because very often, you know, people are trying to remember numbers or just show you something on a uh, you know their own device. And if if they realise they can actually just transfer it straight into your unit, that's that's a that's a brilliant way of doing it. Yes, that's right. And remember as well, when you are actually out on the water on the day, you may find some other marks that you yeah. want to try. You, you may, the quickest and easiest way perhaps is either drop a mark on the chart plotter immediately or drop a mark on the mobile. If you're out and you've got a rod in your hand, it may, you may just be able to get another a yeah. mark quickly on your mobile rather than going back into the wheelhouse and mark it yeah. on the plotter. So next we're going to talk about how this is a sort of backup, if you like, to your plotter, the, uh, uh, a backup in your pocket, so to speak. So how does that work? Indeed it is. It's a backup little chart plot that you've got in your pocket, a second reference for you, not to replace the onboard chart plotter, but to complement it because you're building up a library of all your marks that you've got. They're saved in your Navionics cloud. It's your personal cl cloud. Um, 
uh, you can start to track at the beginning of the day simply by starting the uh, pressing the start button, which is quite a nice thing to do. You start that off. Basically, it's creating a track uh, recording everywhere you've been for the day. When you return, you can save that track at any point. And of course, once you're out there, that then is saved in your Navionics library. But afterwards, you can then recall that, as I'm just showing you now, there's my, all of my tracks at various times. Uh, I can go and review those at any time. Some of those tracks were two or three years ago. But it's a very no good way to be able to understand how, how successful you've been on the day, where you went wrong, how far you drifted, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's often something that people, I mean, when I get back from a fishing trip, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice to be able to go back and look at what you've actually been doing that day because the memory can play tricks. You know, you get details like that wrong. So if you've got it actually, in, you know, once you got off the boat, you got back home, somebody asked you about it, or you're, like I do, writing articles about stuff I've done, I can actually refer back to what, what actually happened. Finally, we're going to talk about Sonar Shark Live, I believe, one of your other uh, um, items. So, um, Okay, yes, uh, that's right, Tim. We've got a function called Sonar Chart Live, which is compatible with many of today's chart plotters. Now, Sonar Chart Live is a way in which you can create your own mapping in real time as you're moving. Now, it will run either on the chart plotter, depending on which model you have, or in other cases, it will run on the chart plotter and on your mobile. In some cases, it will just run on your mobile. But you simply select Sonar Chart Live option uh, here uh, in the menu, uh, connect it to the Wi-Fi on the plotter, and you'll create real-time mapping as you're moving. Um, the, lastly, uh, uh, having been out for a, a, a good day's fishing, I would hope that you've caught some fish. So here's another nice feature that we've got. In the top left, you've got the camera icon. If you want to take a photo, hit the camera icon, that gives you then a geo-reference photo for that fish of the day that hopefully you caught on all of the three marks that we selected. Uh, but, it's a it, but it's a rewarding way to conclude all the efforts that you've done and seen that you've actually caught some fish and you've had a successful day out. And afterwards, you can go back home and review the whole thing, have a look at your Navionics library uh, and uh, see what you can do better next time. Navionics boating app is extremely popular. Um, there's got so much functionality and we're adding things and introducing new features all of the time. I'd uh, urge everybody to play with it. Just go through the menu, try all the things, make sure you create your account with Navionics. This way you make your own cloud and all those tracks, those marks, etc., that I mentioned to you are saved always there and backed up for you. Um, but use it, play with it. You're not going to break it. So what is the cost of downloading the app? Sure. So uh, we offer a two week free trial of the app to begin with. Um, if you then choose you want to buy it, you can get coverage of all of the UK and Ireland uh, for about £35. You've always got that. It then gives you one year of updates. Uh, after the year is up, you've still got what you started with. But if you want to continue to get chart updates, then you resubscribe for another year.